Lab 45 has a Python script. And it's asking, what does that script do? Well, if you're familiar with Python, you probably look at it and guess right away what it's doing. But if you're not familiar with Python, what we can do is run the script and then observe what happens. So we run the command and it says, hey, I can't print that out. I don't have permission. So either you need to use sudo or just move to a directory where you can write files. In my case, I'm just going to change to the temp directory where anyone can write files. And then another problem you might have is you run the command and you get this error about Python versus Python 3. And this happens all the time in the class that I teach because students have different systems, some of which are running Python 2 and some of which are running Python 3. So if you get this error, just add a 3 to the end of Python command and that'll use the correct command. Then the next problem that you could run into is it'll say that there's an error. And the reason is, is that in Python 2, you would just call the print command directly. But in Python 3, Python, or excuse me, print became a function call. So you end up needing to have the parenthesis around it. So now we've seen all three of the common questions that come up all the time in this lab, and we've actually run the command. And so now let's print the contents of the file, and we're going to end up getting the next question, which is, hey, the file is blank. There's nothing in it. So I print the file, and it says there's nothing there. Actually, there is something there. Notice that there's a space. So if I just hit the Enter key, when I drop down to the next line, there's no space between the two command prompt lines. When I actually print the contents of this file, you'll see that there is a space between the two command line prompts. To look and see what's actually in the file, we're going to use hex dump. So we say hex dump and then the name of the file. We hit enter. And what we find out is that there is a character in the file on the first line. It is a character A. And character A translates to the number 10 because Again, this is in hex decimal, so you go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then you start over at 10, and then 11, 12, 30, 14, and so on you go. So the letter A is the 10th uh, hexadecimal character, and that translates to a line feed. And in Linux, a line feed is a enter key. It's the equivalent of pressing the return key on your keyboard. So that's why it's producing that blank space. When we come over to the answers, none of them really look like they're correct though because they all talk about these null characters. And when we go back over to the file, we see that the character that we saw was the 10. What's going on here? Well, actually it did insert a null character into the file, but the thing about the print function is is that unless you tell it not to, it automatically appends a new line or the, essentially the return key or enter key to the end of whatever it printed. So it doesn't just print what you asked it to print, it prints what you asked plus also that new line character. It really did print the null character. The null character is right here, it's the double zero which kind of makes sense because if you look at the command, it was printing a double zero here. But why are the characters reversed? Why is the new line first and the double zero null character second? Well, the reason is, is this computer uses an Intel chip. So that chip reads from right to left, not left to right. So it actually did print the null character first because we're reading from right to left and then it printed the new line second, and thus explains how this lab works. For the answer, we're going to pick the fourth, insert a null character into file.txt, hit submit, and we found out that is the correct answer.